Okay, welcome to Genesee Academy. My name is Hans Holkern, and I'm going to talk to you now a little bit about this built-in challenge in the EDW, the EDW challenge. Well, um, data warehousing, uh, from kind of the beginning of time, has had a goal of looking at an integrated, non-volatile, time-variant store of data. That is to say, this enterprise data warehouse box here includes all data integrated from multiple source systems. From that integrated store, I can then pull and create my, uh, my star schemas. However, the problem has been that to get to this kind of, a, of a architecture, I have to build that enterprise data warehouse. And that takes a long time. And who should pay for it? If I have a person coming in that says, hey, I want this um, delivery, I have this requirement from the data that you have, uh, you say, great. Uh, and so you start to uh, build up. You say, well, hold on just a minute. Let me just finish. And if you don't mind paying for it, uh, this enterprise data warehouse, that actually includes all data integrated from all systems. And of course, again, this is a very difficult task to do. Now, you would say, let's uh, build it in increments. The problem is uh, it really hasn't been feasible to, to do that kind of work. Uh, so we have this uh, boil the ocean approach that, that has not been working. So what do people do? People say, let's go ahead and just build uh, that mart. Let's, let's take the information we have. Let's create the mart. Now, let's just take a minute and think about this for a minute. In this solution, we don't have an architectural layer for an enterprise warehouse. We have a layer for a dimensional, in this case, dimensional star schema for, for a mart. But as we grow, we really don't have a warehouse layer. Now, is this a bad thing? I'll give you a second to think about it. And your second is up. Um, no, I, this, this is not a bad thing, of course, because if we have a requirement that the IT team is able to address and meet, deliver this, this uh, um, mark, this uh, star schema, and it has business value, um, that's, of course, a good thing. We, we should be doing this. It's a thing we do. And when the next one comes in, we should also do the same thing. We should take advantage of our skills and build another star schema. But what's happened here, you'll notice, is I'm pulling now data from sales twice, one for this star schema and one for this other one. Well, when I do my transformation on sales here to, for example, deal with exceptions or integrate data or summarize data, um, what, what kinds of information I pull on the products, it, is it the same? in the ETL transform that occurs to star one and to star two? Or are there any differences in the ETL stream between the two? Well, let's think about it. Star one was built by Al. Al left about four months ago to go work at Google, okay? So ah, we're not exactly sure what's in the ETL. We can go look at it, but that would then take time and effort. So uh, Sue builds star two, um, interpreting the sales data from, from the sales source system in her way and creates that, creates that star. Again, we've built value, not a big deal. We don't have an EDW, that's a negative. How negative is it? Well, maybe it's not so good in the end because if our goal now is to expand in this, to move along the maturity curve of business intelligence data warehousing, we are gonna have more and more and more requirements coming in. These requirements are going to require additional star schemas, additional flat file deliveries, whatever they are, but more marts downstream. And if every time I take a mart downstream and I have to recreate it, like I'm doing here, then the problem is, is that I'm going to have now multiple different ETL paths running across into this layer. Now, we've done some things to, to, uh, to deal with this, of course, things like uh, creating conformed dimensions, then reading from uh, MART layer to MART layer, basically within a conformed, federated uh, fashion. But again, it gets more and more difficult now as we add more context data to the same dimensions to maintain those dimensions. They grow out of control. They're huge record lengths. They're hard to manage. They have to be re-engineered. And we also have, just in general, maintaining this and the re-engineering costs kind of spiral out of control. Well, of course, as you get into some of our other sessions, you'll see this leads to forces that push us into silos. Now we take copies and, and we put them off into other areas because it's difficult to make this work. So we, then we know once we reach this point, we want to get to this. We want to have this 
framework now where we have um, these sources coming in, they go to the central enterprise warehouse layer, and we have marks on the other side. The key to making this happen then, right, is I have to be able to build that enterprise warehouse incrementally, and it has to be able to adapt to the changes when the new requirements and sources arrive. And that's what the data vault is really about. The data vault says, when you were building those first stars, and there was nothing wrong with it, remember, you were delivering business value, but when you were delivering them, you took just the component that you need now for the warehouse, for the vault layers, and built those in into the vault initial uh, model. Then you pivot them back out into the, into the marts that you're using. A, a slight incremental effort, but not building the whole warehouse itself. And maybe you don't do this on the first star, but you do it on the fifth. And you, you just start to deploy this layer. Then, as you move forward, as you can see here, that Data Vault EDW can accept changes to its model. It can adapt and build, get built incrementally as it moves forward. That's kind of how the hub link satellite structures work. When new things come in, it can adapt, and it's not difficult to re-engineer. And the total cost of ownership over time actually starts to go down. In other words, when you have incremental, uh, marginal incremental new projects, instead of them being more expensive than the prior one, they become less expensive than the prior one because the re-engineering costs are not an issue and more and more of the data is available for us to consume from, from the downstream perspective. So if we think about it from this, from this level then, the warehouse itself has a built-in challenge on how we deal with this type of movement from uh, building an enterprise data warehouse layer itself. How does it get funded? How does it get built? How much time does it take? What's the best path to build one that's, that's going to be uh, incremental and um, provide us value in a low TCO? And these are the things that uh, we are working hard here to address using Data Vault methods and Data Vault techniques. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in another session. Thanks.